Hello, everyone, and welcome to our final day of College of Business Week. We are discussing the Masters of Accounting program at Tarleton State University. As we're going through our presentation, if you do have questions, we ask that you submit those use, using the Q&A box or the chat box and we will handle those at the end of the presentation. So today I'm joined by Dr. James Goodpasture, who serves as faculty coordinator for our Masters of Accounting program. And at this time, I will just turn things over to him. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Uh, I always enjoy uh, talking about our Masters of Accounting program. Uh, accounting is a very, uh, a good occupation to go to. There are lots of jobs. Uh, one thing I always ask students is uh, I ask what their degree is, then I ask them what kind of job they're going to get. So for accounting, it's never better. We uh, here at Tarleton, uh, we used to be a secret. We're not a secret anymore. We have employers who send emails to me and other faculty. Hey, you have any graduates uh, anytime soon? And we'd like to hire them. So uh, not only do they um, receive jobs, but the pay is very good. I had one uh, student who took a job as an intern, hadn't even gotten a bachelor's yet, took an intern job and uh, got a $1,000 signing bonus and was making $25 an hour, which I thought was pretty good for someone who didn't even have a bachelor's. So um, again, uh, there's going to be uh, lots of accountants, uh, need for accountants out there. Uh, I read an article the other day in Wall Street Journal that uh, some companies cannot file their financial statements because they don't have enough accountants to put them together. So there's definitely a demand. Um, and, of course, with demand, pay goes up. Um Medium pay of 50000 This is kind of an old slide. It's actually higher than that. Um, but um, really, it's, it's a place where you can get a job and get paid for what you do. Now, accounting degree is one of the more difficult degrees to get. It's very rigorous. Um, to get a, you can get an accounting degree, but really you need to have 120 hours total to become a CPA. If you're going to get 120 hours, you might as well get a master's degree. So the whole accounting program is more than a four-year degree. You're really looking at at least five years of, of uh, schooling. With our program, it's an online program, um, and uh, we uh, reach out to students in Waco and in Fort Worth. Um, we, about half of our students are traditional students who have an undergraduate degree in accounting. Um, about half of our students are first year uh, generation students where they are the first in uh, their family to go to college. Um, but we also have a lot of students who uh, come from public school teachers, uh, veterinarians, um, nursing. Uh, they're a very uh, diverse uh, type of backgrounds and they come into our program and we give them the foundation courses that they need and they uh, then go on and finish our master's in accounting uh, major. So it's a very versatile uh, type of program. Um, we admit students not only in the fall, but we admit students uh, in January, the beginning of spring semester and in the beginning of summer semester. Our program prepares uh, the students for uh, various uh, professional certifications. I mentioned the CPA exam, Certified Public Accountant exam. Um, it's recently changed its requirements and standards. Uh, Tarleton has changed our program slightly uh, to adapt to that. 
So uh, we still prepare students for the CPA exam and also for the CMA exam. Um, and then uh, also the Chartered Global Management Accountant and Certified Fraud Examiner. We have a couple of professors who um, have the CFE um, certification and they are uh, published in uh, fraud. Uh, their research has to do with fraud. Uh, and uh, so the students receive a very good background in that area. Um, it's our students typically have a job outside of school. Um, we have smaller classes, uh, usually 10 to 20, actually. Um, faculty at Tarleton, our primary focus is teaching. 60% of our workload 60% of our time is dedicated to teaching, whereas other universities, research is primary. Our, here at Tarleton, we concentrate on teaching. So faculty uh, are very available. And um, really, at Tarleton, you don't become tenured uh, unless you can teach. So we have very good faculty uh, and good faculty-student interactions. Our pass rate is one of the best uh, in the area. Um, in the A&M system, we're second uh, to College Station as far as our pass rate in the multi multi multiplex area, sorry, Dallas-Fort Worth area. Um, it is uh, one of the highest there as well. Um, so we think we do a very good job preparing students for the CPA exam. We are accredited by uh, SACS, um, and you can see that our initial accreditation, 1926. Uh, we've been reaffirmed, uh, reaccredited in 2021. Our next accreditation is in 2027. We expect that to go uh, fairly smoothly. Um, and the reaffirmation again is in 2031. Um, okay. And we're also accredited. We have specialized accreditation uh, under AACSB. Uh, that puts us in the top 5% of uh, business schools in the world. Our initial accreditation was in 2022. Um, we have our next uh, review in 2027 with reaffirmation uh, 10 years after the initial back in. So our reaffirmation will be in 2032. And um, really, we concentrate on being one of the best. Um, you know, it's nice to be uh, recognized as being the top 5% of world's uh, business schools. So um, we uh, encourage innovation in teaching and um, fully engaged uh, faculties, fully engaged in research. Okay, how do you get into our program? Well, uh, your undergraduate GPA, if it's 3.0 or higher, will waive the GMAT or GRE. And um, then if it's below 3.0 needs to be at least a 2.5. Then we'll ask you to take the GMAT. Um, then you can, again, as I mentioned, you can uh, uh, seek admission in fall, spring, or summer. And it's 30 credit hours uh, for degree completion. There's no thesis uh, in this program. And again, if you have a, uh, a non-accounting major, uh, we have foundation courses that will prepare you uh, to uh, for the master's in accounting program. Now, those courses are in addition to the 30 credit hours, but uh, we have an excellent advisor who uh, can guide you uh, through the process. Um, and, um, you know, whether you are starting in fall, spring or summer. Okay, uh, each application is reviewed individually. Uh, we look at your undergraduate GPA. Um, 
particularly we pay special attention to the grades you did in accounting. Uh, as I mentioned, if your GPA is 3.0 or higher, we'll waive the GMAT. But if you take uh, need to take the GMAT, we will review those scores. Uh, we also look at professional work experience. If you've worked as a, a bookkeeper or uh, had some business experience, um, what are your personal accomplishments? And what also, what are your personal goals? Why are you getting a master's degree? Uh, we look at letters of reference, uh, if you have those, and you will write an essay uh, with your application on why are you getting a master's in accounting degree. It's a lot of work. It's a rigorous uh, program. And so we want to make sure you are going to be successful. Um, it can take 12 months. If you go full time, uh, you can get your master's in accounting uh, 12 months after you have your foundation classes. Um, there is a comprehensive exam uh, at the end. You usually take in the last semester of uh, your coursework, but you can take it the semester after you finish your coursework if you want to concentrate on the, just the comprehensive exam. Uh, that exam kind of mimics the CPA exam uh, and uh, to prepare you uh, for the rigors of uh, getting a, a CMA or CPA, uh, uh, get those certifications because the exams are not easy. Our faculty uh, have a lot of business experience as well as international experience. Uh, we have uh, faculty who've worked for airlines. We have faculty who've worked for hospitals um, and just a very uh, business background, as well as we have faculty from uh, Middle East, uh, from China um, and uh, Europe. Um, just a lot of uh, experience that they can bring into the classroom. Uh, since we're an online program, we have uh, flexible course scheduling. Um, um, we are have faculty or have uh, outreach available for Stephenville, uh, Fort Worth, um, and Waco, as well as uh, as I mentioned, just a general online. We've had students as far away as uh, Australia um, and then back uh, the other direction to Afghanistan. Okay, we have eight required accounting courses, um, then one business research methods course, and then you uh, also have an elective graduate course. That elective graduate course can be outside of accounting if you want to pursue, uh, a gra uh, say, take a graduate course in marketing or in human resources. Uh, most students take uh, an elective course in accounting, though. Here are the required courses, governmental and not-for-profit accounting, uh, advanced financial accounting, accounting theory, uh, tax, um, and then ethics. All accountants need to take an ethics course uh, and auditing, as well as financial statement analysis. Now, if you've taken these courses in uh, somewhere else or um, as an undergraduate, uh, then we uh, will see about uh, maybe substituting um, your uh, course that you've already taken in place of these, and then you uh, will have another elective. Uh, but that's on an individual basis. Uh, some of our elective accounting courses, uh, you can take an internship in accounting. We uh, encourage that. We have about 20 interns every spring. Um, and then uh, in the summer, we also have interns. Um, you can also take a course in a, a state and gift taxation, uh, accounting information systems, uh, managerial accounting, get more information there, and, and also uh, fraud examination. Um, again, you can take uh, these accounting 
uh, elective courses, or you can also take electives in other disciplines. Here's our program uh, faculty. Uh, Keldon Bauer is actually our current uh, dean. He's our interim dean while we search for a full-time dean. Um, and then uh, Stephen Blythe has, uh, I think he's just recently gotten another certification of CMA. Anyway, um, uh, long list of faculty, all of whom are their primary job is to help you uh, learn the material and become successful. If you have any questions, uh, please uh, feel free to email me. Um, and uh, I will respond uh, within 24 hours, usually. Um, I don't know what other information to give you unless you ask questions. So what other information do you want? What questions do you have? For our live audience members, we are now open for your questions. So please go ahead and use the Q&A box or the chat box to submit those and we'll get those handled. Uh, while we're waiting for those to come in, I did have some questions of my own for you, Dr. Goodpasture. Certainly. How and I help? was... I was interested to hear you say that there have been some recent changes to the CPA exam. And so how has the program adapted to um, support students with the new format? Well, with the CPA exam, they still have four tests that um, uh, need to be taken. Uh, three tests are taken by everyone. And so we prepare you for those three tests. And then there's uh, what I call electives, or you get to choose the fourth uh, exam to take. And uh, with that, uh, there's enough flexibility in our program that you can prepare yourself uh, either for data analytics, that's one of the elective programs, or uh, fraud, uh, and you know, auditing and fraud is another elective, or for extra uh, courses in uh, regulations, financial regulations. So uh, we are um, changing, or not changing, well, changing uh, some of the objectives of our courses to match what the uh, Texas State Board of Professional Accountancy uh, is uh, asking of us. And so uh, we are trying to be flexible, and we're flexible enough to allow students to um, work on uh, the CPA exam. Uh, again, that whatever that last question is. Yeah. You mentioned that our, our uh, CPA mm -hmm. exam rates are stellar, and that's been the case for many years now. We're second in the Texas A&M system, second only to the flagship institution, Texas A&M University. What do you think contributes to the success of our students on the well, as I mentioned, uh, sixty percent of our workload is teaching. We are dedicated to our students. Um, I and all my colleagues, we have open door policies. Um, as far as uh, if we're in our office, you know, students can come and uh, speak to us. Um, emails, uh, everyone's open to communication. I mentioned that 50% of our students are first generation uh, students, that their uh, parents or their other members of the family uh, did not go to college. So I'm very proud of the fact that we have such a high CPA pass rate, uh, and yet uh, our, st our students don't have a family background uh, in college college life. So we work very hard to make sure our students uh, learn the material. Uh, I want to point out accounting is not an easy degree to get, but if you work hard, it's very rewarding. Yes. So what academic backgrounds are people coming from? Are most of your students either working in accounting or have accounting in their academic background? About half of the students will have bachelor's degrees in accounting. Um, 
the other half, we have uh, students who come from kinesiology, uh, you know, physical therapy backgrounds, uh, who come from veterinarian backgrounds. Uh, public school teaching is a big uh, subset. Um, students uh, come from a wide variety. I myself, I have a degree in nursing. And then I also have, you know, uh, I have a degree in nursing before I received my master's in accounting. So uh, a lot of uh, health care is involved. Um, so it's it's quite a variety. We're a flex flexible enough program that we can handle a lot of different majors. That's amazing. So I wanted to talk to you about uh, the format of classes. You mentioned there are online options and also, well, let me ask, how many courses are available face-to-face -face for, for people who might be interested in that? Um, really, uh, most of our courses now are online. And uh, we do have some courses like ethics and other courses, which are what we call synchronous Zoom, mm -hmm. where it is still online, but it will be held at a particular time during the day using Zoom. Mm -hmm. So most of our courses now are online. Um, we have a few electives and um, that are face-to-face. -face. We do have a, a tax class, I believe, in the spring that is face-to-face, -face, but the rest of the year it is online. Okay. Well, that's great because it makes it an option for people who are uh, at a distance from any of our uh, campuses may not even be in, in our same country. So it's great to have that flexibility. Can you talk a little bit about how the, the program is executed online? Because for some of us who are of a certain age uh, that pre predates <laughs> the internet, we have no concept of what it might mean to be a, a student fully online, particularly at the graduate student level. Okay, well, um, if, Again, I mentioned there's synchronous Zoom and asynchronous. Synchronous uh, Zoom is when you have the uh, meeting time set uh, every week. Uh, with that, it's it's like an online classroom. It's uh, interactive with the professor. The professor prepares uh, lectures. They prepare uh, in-class assignments. Uh, and yet there's resources uh, outside of uh, class. Um, so it's very similar to a face-to-face -face environment, uh, but using uh, uh, the internet and its uh, capabilities uh, to allow uh, geographic flexibility. Now with the, what I call asynchronous, uh, there you don't have the set meeting time, but uh, professors will set up times that are optional uh, to meet with students as a group or online. And um, most professors, myself included, uh, if a student wants face-to-face -face time, just email me and we'll set up a one-to-one -one, uh, Zoom time and we'll talk about things and answer questions. Um, professors will create videos uh, that uh, will mimic um, classes, face-to-face -face classes, and cover the content. So um, there's there's a lot of ways um, of handling the material and a lot of flexibility in an online environment. Yes. For the classes that are synchronous, when are they usually held? Are those evening classes? Yes, uh, late afternoon and evening. Uh, again, we... Uh, assume most of our students are working yeah. and they work during the day. So we try to accommodate our students by scheduling uh, at least the asynchronous Zoom classes uh, in the evening. Yes, very good. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Goodpasture, for your time. I've enjoyed hearing about your program and congratulations to uh, you and your faculty for all the success you've had and, and the support you've given to your students. Well, well, thank you. Go ahead. well, thank you for having me. It's been an honor to be here. And I hope those uh, who are listening to the program, uh, please feel free to reach out and ask your questions. Yes, that's what we're here for. 
for our live audience members, thank you for your time. If you uh, uh, would like to go back and review this presentation, it will be available to review on demand on the College of Graduate Studies YouTube channel. So please revisit it as needed. If you know of others who would be interested in this content, please feel free to share it with them as well. And we've got one more graduate program to discuss. Uh, for our College of Business Week at 2 p.m. Central today. We'll be closing out the week with a presentation regarding our master's program in management. So thanks to all for your time. And I think with that, we can end our webinar. So have a great rest of your day. Yeah, thank you.